In general, I love Imray charts. I love the fact that you get all these little chartlets and you don't need to get half a dozen charts out like you do with the Admi Admiralty portfolios. However, this led me into making a bit of a boo-boo. I was looking at our passage plan and basically we want to go from here all the way down through here down to here. So I did what you usually do in these situations. I got the dividers and I measured out how far it was from our anchorage to where we needed to be to do the passage in the swellies. And as you can see, hopefully, it's about 10 nautical miles. However, this is where I went wrong. That scale down the side doesn't apply to this chart. It applies to the main chart up here. This chart has its own scale, cunningly hidden up the inside, and it's completely different. This distance isn't 10 miles, this distance is about 4 miles, and that makes the whole thing totally different. I was sitting beating myself up wondering how we were going to get from here down to here in time to catch the current through the swellies, and I was wondering how we were going to manage it. It's going to be easy. The whole distance we need to do isn't 16 miles, it's about 6 miles. I could walk it and make it on time. Sailing summer in the UK. Here comes the rain. And uh, for those of you watching in colour, the black and white thing in the distance is Menai Bridge. When it comes to mooring boys, one of the things that we find is our friend is Mr. Swifty and we have actually mounted him um, at 90 degrees to a decorating pole uh, that you use for painting. Okay, can you do that again? Yeah, so it's on a decorating pole that we use for painting. So what Bev's doing now is she's doing a um, sheet bend. This is probably going to be a double sheet bend, no, if she knows. It's know. a single day. It's going to last for a few seconds. So she's just doing a single sheet bend that does sort of uh, all sorts of stuff. So she's put, just put a, a simple note on there. Now this is our second line that we're putting on. Now it's a pretty big mooring. There here, and she's attached it, and that's the rope gone through. Once you've got the first line through, that allows you to take your second line down, which is your mooring line. Now this is the bit I always find hard to do actually um, is getting rid of all the rest of the sheet bends and everything because you just seem to have lots of rope around. And she's actually doing it both of the both ropes round and cleated. So, so now that we've got the second rope on uh, she's just going to fiddle with the front because she's not on the it. wrong side when she did it first. Because your primary job is to get moored up come hell or high water. Yeah, it can all be fixed later. And that's what we've just done. We've just fixed it all later. Now this is a pretty big one. So I don't think we're going to go anywhere on this mooring, boy. <laughs> no, we've got two on just in case. But let's go put the kettle on. We've got two on, and now it's time for a cup of tea. Hey.
So this is a close-up of where we're going and it's the gap between the two bridges, Menai Bridge and Britannia Bridge. And this passage is full of rocks and all sorts of things and channels and it's difficult to get through. It's known as the Swellies. We come through the bridge at the midpoint and we take a line to this cardinal until we pass the bungalow and the boathouse. That gets us past this bunch of rocks here called the platters, which stick up nearly three metres above chart datum. Once we pass them, we can aim for the gap midway between the cardinal and Price's Point here. Once we reach that point, however, we have then got to aim for the cottage on here until we intercept this leading line. And when we intercept this leading line, which is done with two pylons here, we run down it, but we can't run all the way down it. Once we're between Crib and Rock and this pyramid, if we carry on down the line, we'll run into the rocks. So once we reach the pyramid, we then have to swing out again toward the centre of this span. But once we come through this span, there's more rocks on this side. So from here, we've got to go to the statue of Lord Nelson until we're in mid-channel, at which point we can then turn and we will have safely navigated through. Coming up to um, Menai Bridge and we can just about see the bungalow just ahead. What a... You can actually see the upwelling. Go through on the midpoint. bungalow that we need to be a beam of. You can see where the upwelling is because it's um, just there underneath the blowhouse.
we've harboured up, so we've moored up at Port de Norwich, which is a very tiny little um, uh, crack in the wall to be honest. Um, but in this particular one, <sighs> we're on a harbour wall again. So we're using angels um, to keep us in. But on this one, we've also got these lines. So whereas before on Port Patrick, we had uh, risers. Here, we've got these sorts of lines. So we've got one of them moored onto that one. Okay, so, and then we've got another one moored onto the front. <sighs> so down there I've got an angel. Um, and I've also, um, as an extra precaution, I've got um, a line onto one of these little lines that come down. Mm -hmm. 